so it's recording now so i think you can see my screen right can you see yes, my screen? yeah all right so so let's let's start i'm actually a recording so that i can post it into the youtube so this is our new chapter chapter number three which is called pentium processor we will discuss the basic structure and architecture and organization of this Pentium processor. Why we choose Pentium processor? Because we know that there are two types of processors, CISC and RISC, and the Pentium processor is the best and common and very popular example of CISC types of processor. Although all the Pentium, all the all the uh, Intel processor are not CISC processor, but the Pentium processor of the Intel Corporation, they're actually using the CISC architecture. So that's why we're going to discuss about the Pentium processor architecture. So let's start. So, as we know that Pentium processor is not just one single processor, it's actually a series of processor. And it was started in very early age. As you can see in the first line, it is actually 1969. Very early at that time, they actually introduced this first about their, their first types of microprocessor. And then they update the microprocessor every year, every single year, and then they launch the new, um, uh, new types of processor. So Intel is actually their own architecture, how they are going to design and develop and architect their um, processor. That's why the, they have a specific name or architecture. It is called Intel architecture, in short, IA. Please remember this name, Intel architecture, okay? Intel architecture, in short, IA. In the following part, you, every, many times you will see this name, IA. So remember, IA means Intel architecture. So what is Intel architecture? It's actually their own process, own architecture, or own technique or tools, how they can develop their own microprocessor. Because you know that every time, uh, Intel actually are giving us a new, uh, new microprocessor every year. So based on that Intel architecture, they actually build their processor. So if, as a programmer, as a developer, um, so if we know that if you know the Intel architecture very, very nicely and, and very confidently, we actually can write most of the code in any types of Intel um, processor. That's why Intel architecture, to know the Intel architecture is really, really important. We have another architecture which is called AMD. AMD using different architecture. Generally, AMD is not that much uh, popular. That's why we are not going to discuss it here because most of the time our processor is Intel. So that's why we are using Intel architecture. So let's see that how it's actually coming all the processor. So we know that the first processor of this architecture is actually coming 8086, very, very popular one. We know everyone that is actually 8086 early. So and also we know that it's very early, 1979. But these are not, I mean, that much, I mean, uh, widely used because it's very, very limited, it's very, very, I mean, not that much powerful one so the the most recent one i mean the most advanced one most recently it is actually introduced in 1985 which is called actually first 32 bit processor we know already in chapter number two that what is 32 bit processor 32 bit processor means the size of the address bus we expect that it is 32 bit wide and the data bus maybe double of it for example, it may be 64 bit. We expect that unless it is uh, the design in different ways. So there is a 32 bit processor and 380386 is actually also very, very, uh, I mean the basic processor because based on that, they actually create our well-known Pentium series in 1993. So let me show you the, the overall uh, summary. This is actually the summary of everything what we are discussing. So you can see that we have some processor name. These are the name of the processor. It's just the name. No, there is nothing, no meaning of that. It's just the model name given by the Intel Intel Corporation or Intel Company. This is the launching year. This is the frequency. I hope you know what is the frequency. That means it's the clock cycle. This is the number of transistor. By the way, K means thousand, 10 to the power three. M means million of mega, 10 to the power six, okay? So this is the number of transistor, number of transistor in one single microprocessor. This is called the register width. That is how width your register is. Whenever we are going to discuss about the Pentium register or 3.2, we will discuss about
or the register, this column. But just for now, remember that this is the width or the size of the registers in of this um, in this particular processor. For example, the width or the size of the register of 8086 is 16 bit, whereas Pentium 4 has 32 bit register. So I hope you remember about the register that um, it is the fastest memory, right? Remember about the memory hierarchy. In the memory yeah. hierarchy, we actually have the top is the register. So this is actually the register. That means more the memory, more the width of the mem uh, of the register is. That means you actually have a faster microprocessor, and you can get more data fastest because we know that the register are the fastest uh, memory in our memory hierarchy or memory pyramid. So this is the register width of this types of processor. Data bus, we already know what is the data bus. Generally, generally is double the size, double the size of the address bus. Okay, if the address bus is 32, for example, this one, Pentium 4, the address bus is 32 generally. It's not written here, 32, and it is uh, the data bus is 64. But it's not always true. It is actually a general architecture. Okay, this is not an universal rule. It depends on the manufacturer generally. Data bus is double the address bus and maximum address space. We know already that how we can calculate this one. We know that the address bus of 8086 is 16 bit. That's why it's uh, not this one. See, this one is 16 bit. That's why it's 4 GB of the maximum memory. So is that means the size or the width of the address bus is should be to the power that number. Then we can get this. That's how we can get. We already know it. So if you can see. Okay, I'm not asking to memorize everything is written here. No need to memorize, by the way. No need at all. But you need to you need you need to have that ability to explain each and everything that what does it mean, why it is like that. Okay, you should have an ability. I'm not asking that you memorize Pentium 4 uh, uh, launch in 2000 and then it has a 42 million. Not necessary. You just need to know, yes, Pentium 4 has so many highest number of transistors. It has the 32 bit of the, the register with 32 bits means we actually have 32 bits wide of that register. So this kind of explanation I am expecting from you. Okay. And it's a very good idea, this picture, very good idea that how the Intel processor um, coming from one to another. Actually, all this processor you are seeing is actually upgraded version of the previous one so look at the first one is actually 8086 is actually upgraded version of 8080 8080 previously is the upgraded version of 400 so same thing 80286 is the upgraded version of 8086 family similar with this one pentium is the upgraded version of 80486 after after 80486, they actually don't have 80586 or 686. After that, they stop it and they give a new name like Pentium. But the basic architecture, that means Intel architecture, IA, more or less, they actually have the same. They just increase the capacity, increase the efficiency, increase the memory management, increase the width of the data bus and address bus and the register bus and, and the register width. And increase the internal, uh, I mean, uh, architecture. That's it. But the basic components inside each processor or the architecture, more or less same. Okay. So if you know Intel architecture, any one of it, I think it's it is quite enough. That's why whenever we say about the Pentium register, as you can see, Pentium registers, more or less, most of the time is actually the same. It's maybe it's not the same for. Maybe it's not for the same for this one and this one, but the basic architecture is same. Maybe the number of registers, as you can see, is the number of transistors is, is more. Maybe the maybe the number of registers inside that processor may be more, but internal architecture same. Okay. All right. So this is the overall idea about the Pentium um, processor family. Okay. So you may ask me that what might be the question in the exam? Because that is your main concern. Exam question for getting marks. No problem. The ma the question of the exam may be in this way that please define or briefly describe the Pentium processor family. I am not expecting that you write all of them. At least two or three is enough. Uh, the launching year not necessary. 
it is really not necessary but i what i expect at least we can write the maximum address space the data transistor not necessary because most of the transistor are not same because when i google it when i google it how many transistor we have in uh, in a pentium 4 is actually they are saying that 125 million whereas they actually written 42 million i actually searched it before your class let me show you number of transistor of the pentium microprocessor look what is actually they are saying they are saying that uh, 80486 is 3.3 million 80486 80486 this one look what they have written they have written 1.2 million so if I, whenever i actually double check with the book and the google they are actually not giving me the same maybe i don't know what is the reason maybe the the manufacturing actually have that upgraded version of upgraded version of this because this book written in 2004 or 5 16 years ago maybe this one is uh, the most recent one okay so so that's why i'm not asking to memorize this number of transistor because it actually keep changing i also checked that our pentium 4 look what is written here i hope you can see my screen this is actually says that um pentium 4 contains 125 million transistor look what is written they have written they have written 42 million maybe the version of pentium 4 when they launched when they wrote the book i think at that time uh, it was the maximum on 42 million but now maybe the pentium 4 they actually because they have they also the production line is still on for pentium 4 so maybe this is the current one 125 million okay yes sir there is a uh, New yeah, because they still produce the, the Pentium 4 processor. Maybe this is the latest one which we have now, yeah. but this one is actually the old one. So that's why don't worry about the transistor count. It's actually keep changing. Whenever we have upgraded version of Pentium 4, then maybe they increase the number of transistor. But the original architecture, they are actually remain same. Okay. Okay. Is there any question? Is there any question, anyone? Sir, in this, in AMD is efficient from Intel. Then why should we? Can we consider AMD is best? Then uh, why we are not using AMD? AMD. It's actually, it's it's actually a, a phenomenon. Like, like whenever you want to buy a car, which one you want to buy? Toyota because everyone is using Toyota same as same as here is actually a, a myth that is a myth that Pentium processor is much better and it's easier and better than AMD for example I know almost the difference almost not all most of the part the difference between AMD and AMD and uh, the Intel processor but when I buy my PC it's a new PC but when I buy when I'm going to buy it actually I didn't consider about AMD because it's the myth I know AMD processor is much, sometimes, in some cases, much better. For example, I bought Pentium Core i5, but sometimes it's much more cheaper if I want to buy the AMD Ryzen series. I know it, but still I, I bought the Pentium processor because it's actually the myth. Nothing, it's nothing about the performance. Or it's just the myth. It's our tendency that we actually go for a popular, popular option. Alright, there is no other reason. You can try AMD, no problem. Uh, it's it's actually a this debate is actually long term debate that which one is which one is better, NTM or AMD. Someone says in some cases AMD is better. Someone claim that no Pentium some cases is better. It's the very similar debate as who is the best one, Messi or Ronaldo that is the same same debate same debate which one is better pentium or amd so it entirely depends on your personal perspective that what you are going to use for what reason and for which scenario both of them are fine like messi and ronaldo both of them are fine pele and maradona both of them are fine same thing okay it's just up to you which one you choose 
All right. So this is this is our Pentium processor. By the way, in the book they have written very briefly, very very briefly about Pentium processor. This this one, I I suggest you please read each of the each of the paragraph is actually for one um, one um, processor. Very briefly, just let me tell you. You can understand if you read it by yourself. Some of the thing we made have some problem. For example, the cache, cache size. Let me show you where it's written. I think you know. Look, this is this one, L1 cache. I, I, do you remember about the cache memory? Cache memory. Cache memory is the second highest, uh, second fastest, second fastest memory. Yeah, second fastest memory. Um, Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It's, um, uh, it's noisy. It's okay. Let me explain. So it's a second fastest um, memory of our memory hierarchy, and I told you that cache memory is actually located generally located in between our main memory and our processor. Most of the time, this cache memory is very close to the processor, not very close to the memory. Generally, if you are not, they don't uh, uh, have a different architecture because processor wants to get the data from the register first if you cannot find it then it goes to the cache so if, if this it would be better if the cache is very close to the processor right so depending on the microprocessor we actually have different types of cache level one cache level two level three level four something like that so different types of processor has they actually name like this l1 l2 l3 like that okay and if you have a larger cache that means you can store more data in a fastest memory rather than go to the main memory. So some of the processor, as you can see, they are taking that it has an eight kilobyte of on-chip L1 cache. On-chip L1 cache means inside there is different kind of chip where you actually have level one cache. Generally, the lower level of cache are more faster, but the size is very smaller. That means L1 is faster than L2 and also L2 is faster than L3. But if you think about the size, L1 is shorter, smaller, L2 is slightly bigger, L3 is slightly bigger, like that. So that's why they actually have L1, L2 and L3, but all of them are cache. But depending on the position and the size, they actually have different level, L1, L2 and L3. And depending on the different types of microprocessor, they actually have different types of cache also inside the processor, and also outside the processor and some of the microprocessor can handle more or wider or larger number of cache some of the microprocessor cannot handle that much of the processor for example pentium process the previous pentium processor actually are not eligible are not powerful enough to control the three three level of cache but now our our pentium processor like four and core i3 and core i5 and Go to do they actually have three different types of cache l1 l2 l3 so entirely depends on the processor so the cache memory and the processor also have a very good relationship okay so whenever we did every time you can see that l1 cache l2 cache l2 cache the size of the l2 cache see the size of the l2 cache is bigger 256 kilobyte the more the better the processor the higher the number of the cache size okay so whenever you read it make sure you try to understand what is l1 okay of course this is a six types of processor and we already know about what is ia intel architecture ia wherever you see ia for example this one that means it's intel architecture this one intel architecture fine so i give you it's better i give you five five ten minutes please read 3.1 try to understand what is written here i think you will have a very good idea if you just read it about yourself i already explained i hope i already expressed most part of it don't worry about this this type of thing multimedia streaming don't worry okay just know about the basic thing okay so let me give you five minutes five six minutes read 3.1 try to understand what is written try to visualize that how they actually coming from first is coming from 4004 and then they ended up with Pentium 4 now they ended up with 4 i3 4 i9 very recent one okay so let me give you a little bit of time so please read it and let me know after reading that if you have any confusion okay so please start reading 